Uh, welcome to National Sauna Week Midweek um, Perspective, and uh, the heat is on. I was just telling the panelists I introduced two, two non-sauna aficionados to the sauna last night at our cabin. A little bit of history. I'll only take 10 minutes here for some introduction, medical explanation, and a few other things. I grew up on the Iron Range in Minnesota. I'm the second born generation Finn in this country. And, but I'm only 95% Finnish by, by ancestry. So I can't claim to be 100%. Um, I grew up at, with the sauna as my bath. We had it every Saturday night and sometimes Wednesday night. And it was the way to keep clean. And I find to this day, I have a hard time going into a bathtub, floating in my own dirt, but a sauna washes it off. Anyway, I never took anything other than that until I got into sports in junior high school and had showers at school. My job in the winter was to stoke the sauna up, carry buckets of water about 150 feet from our uh, home into the, the sauna, get the fire going and get it hot, and uh, sometimes a roll in the snow. Uh, in the summer during haying, because I grew up on a farm, we had sauna every night. And there is nothing better than having, say, 180, 190 degree sauna going out into 90 degree heat and feeling cool. It is wonderful. And then uh, drink, especially with the homemade root beer. Nothing better. My path as a physician, internist, um, I did a paper for an honors group in, in medical school called History and Physiology of the Sauna. And at that time in 1970, and I redid it again, uh, that was for a surgery department at the university. I did it again at Abbott Northwestern for a medical conference and then to the predecessor of Finnish, uh, Finn American Cultural Activities Association. And at that time, there was very little benefit found in saunas. The wonderful for relaxation, wonderful to put your little kids to sleep, and you felt great afterwards, but there weren't any proven effects. I remember there was only one Olympic activity that was improved by sauna, and that was target shooting. You know, relaxation, and you could hold still. Nothing else was uh, benefited by it. And I remember one uh, uh, sentence when I was doing my research, there was a book at the Minneapolis Public Library, which I checked out. Um, and these people were doing travels to the North Cape in 1798, 1799. And they were going by sleigh through Finland. And they came up to a, a family sauna and there were people outside and they stopped to find which direction to go because they were half lost. And these naked men were standing out in front and they just pointed the direction that way. And it was well below zero, and they were just amazed. So that's my perspective on how I grew up, same thing. Now, one of the things that has been a, a discussion has been the happiness of saunas. Can we get my daughter's photo on, please? This was uh, taken after a six-day canoe trip into the Boundary Waters when she was five and a half months old. And we came back and she had mosquito bites and a little sunburn. My mother took her in her arms and said, oh, my little granddaughter. Oh, so this is sitting in a bucket on the top shelf of our sauna at home. And look at the happiness there. She just turned 50 last month. So this was a few years ago. And so uh, I have always enjoyed this, but I found when I started going on uh, ski trips with other physicians, some of them, maybe hot dogs, would take a uh, roll in the snow after a sauna as, oh, this is a manly thing to do. See, I never looked at it that way. We just thought it was fun. And you felt so wonderful after it. And so now the, the modification of the millennials and the Gen Zs that we'll hear about has taken over completely different tack than I grew up with, and I suspect with Risto. Now, some of the medical research has, that has come about, and I uh, most recent 
compendium is from the uh, Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and it was just published here within the past couple of months. And uh, one of the concerns that I have, it showed that there was a prolonged life expectancy or at least a diminished likelihood of having coronary artery disease, reducing blood pressure, uh, improving vascular uh, sensitivity. And uh, those were proven in the short term. Most of the study was taken with white Finnish men, several thousand. They have started to take some women in it now. And uh, the concern I have, and I've faced this with many, many different topics in medicine, you get a population, <clears throat> shows one effect, you get a different population, it may not be as strong, or it may be actually adverse sometimes. I don't expect that's necessarily going to be true, <clears throat> but I didn't see any studies, and I had my hospital library run a medical search uh, for the last two years, and before that I did another two years uh, a couple of years ago. And so I've gotten a lot of information here. <clears throat> anyway, enjoy it. That's the whole point. And uh, you may have some health benefits from it, so be it. <clears throat> but I think the other thing that happened in Finland, and Risto, correct me if I'm wrong, I did a paper and a talk on uh, cholesterol back about 25 years ago. And the Seven Nations study that was done in the late 40s and early 50s covered Finland and part of Italy, two groups in the U.S. and others, and found that Finland had by far the highest heart attack incidence. So Finland went through and did dietary changes. So that has to be part of it. And I think every paper that I've looked at, enjoy the sauna, but it's not an isolated thing. You need to look at what you put into your mouth, looking at what you do for exercise, and then the sauna is the cherry on top. I look at it that way. Now, it may be a little more than that. Uh, I don't look at it personally as just a social aspect, which I'm sure we're going to hear about. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it was always a family sort of thing. And uh, uh, I just, you know, grew up with it. I, I guess my, my feeling about the entire thing the Hibbing Clinic uh, up there had a sauna in their clinic. So the physicians would all go there after their staff meeting or before, however they did it. And that's not universal. I never ran into another clinic that has that, and much less in southern Minnesota. Uh, Mayo, I don't know if they have a, a sauna. I know some people have wondered about trying to get it there. The VA, the same thing. And... Uh, I don't think the University of Minnesota has, but maybe from the Minnesota Academy of Medicine, I can modify a few viewpoints. So we'll see. I'm going to quit a little early because I've got about a minute left. And I think we'll go to, to Nicole and JP and ask a couple of questions of each of you for five minutes and then come back and go through some other things. So, Nicole, let's start with you. Uh, how and why did you get into sauna enjoyment? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I was first kind of exposed to sauna. Well, I guess growing up, uh, I'm a member of our local YMCA here in Mankato, Minnesota. So that's what I thought sauna was. Um, fast forward to about 2000, about right during the uh, during COVID, one of my uh, a girlfriend in St. Uh, St. Paul, she decided to turn part of her garage into a sauna, and I was like, what are you talking about? That was the first time I saw a sauna hat, and I was like, this is really cool, and then she started talking about what was happening in the Twin Cities with sauna, uh, but it wasn't until a year later, in November of 2021, I then was able to be a participant on the Governor's Trade Mission, which went to Finland, and so um, I met a lot of folks, uh, a couple of people that are on the call now, uh, on that trade mission. But while we were there, I really got to experience and totally see what the sauna culture was. And what I loved was it was really more, I'm a very much an extrovert. I love having time talking with other people. I don't really consider myself a total health nut, um, but I'm pretty outdoorsy. And so it was really fun to find something where it was almost like a, an internet cafe of the 90s in Helsinki. There's all these different public saunas. And to just see how it was set up. And I just really love the sense of community and the conversations. 
And um, being on a trade mission, there was other folks from the state of Minnesota. And, you know, you're having these conversations and you turn around and I'm like, oh, hey, cool tattoos, commissioner. You know, like there's just this like sense of everyone's equal and just having great conversations. And so it was just something that I was just not exposed to previously and having just gone through the pandemic i used to have a lot of friends would come over and we'd have backyard like i'd, I'd have like bonfires etc and so this was like a new thing to be able to invite people over and so i was like i have to bring this to southern minnesota because i've once you get the twin cities in minnesota south of there we don't really talk about saunas so much so i've got an uphill battle of um wanting to get more and more people into the sauna and bringing it around to different events and people can rent uh, my business is called Stoke Saunas. I then started um, a year after. So by no, uh, this last November, um, I bought a sauna and had it custom built at Voyager Saunas in Shakopee, Minnesota. I met them at Sauna Days in Two Harbors. And so now that was in 2022, uh, May of 2022, I, I attended Sauna Days and got to know all of these other folks. And um, I, I'll put a pause there because I want to make sure you can jump in to kind of get John's perspective as well. I have plenty more to say, but I wanted to leave it at that because um, JP's got a lot more to add. Okay, you've ended a little early, but let's go to JP. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to, I guess, start by just saying hi. I see a bunch of friends, a bunch of um, bunch of people in the, in the group here that I I recognize and then haven't talked to for a long time. Just, hey, Michael and uh, Scott Raisinen is here. Uh, Christopher Rice. Wood burning sauna Facebook group, Kirk Jensen, so you to sauna society. Um, welcome everybody. Um, really fun to cross paths once again. Um, what got me into sauna? You know, I, I, uh, Mikhail Aland uh, shared the article, um, the New York Times article that was recently, it was written on Monday. He shared it on his Facebook and, uh, and he, he tagged me in it and that really, reminded me it was the it was the perfect sweat summit that uh where something really clicked for me i'd experienced sauna before i had uh traveled to the nordic countries um and it wasn't though until i went to the perfect sweat summit that uh, Mikel aland author of sweat wrote this uh amazing book i have it right here actually uh, i read and reread it often but uh, he put together this summit back in 2014, and I begged uh, my friend uh, Glenn Auerbach, who was helping me build uh, my first sauna at the time. I just begged him to let me come, and it was out at this summit where I I learned that sauna is is one of many um, thermic bathing traditions from around the world, and that there's been cultures at these different places and different times that have been basically figuring out what is the best way to um, to, to get the most to joy and healing and benefit from, you know, these elements of fire and ice and, you know, different cultures have different rituals and different structures and different traditions that have kind of uh, evolved around that. And I just got really obsessed with this idea of like, okay, how does, so what does that mean for our cult for, you know, it's, I mean, in the 2015, how could we approach it kind of with that same sensibility of like translating it for our time and into our culture and into our society, um, just with that same, um, yeah, with that same type of authenticity. That's like a word in sauna that I think it's thrown around a lot, and I understand it much differently and use it much differently than um, than a lot of people, and um, it was yeah so it was that perfect sweat summit and Mikel Aland in this thinking of sauna as a, a thermic bathing tradition kind of and getting me curious about how does what does that mean for for here and now and that's what led to the 612 sauna society the formation of that which Kirk is now um, on the board of and um, has kind of been the core of a lot of my projects over the years Stoke Your Outfitters the sauna village um, the Sauna Village was picked up by the Great Northern Festival and just completed it um, a few weeks ago. We get to work with a lot of different saunapreneurs from around the state, and it's been amazing to just incredible. When I started this, you know, 10 years ago, there was 
nobody, <laughs> nobody doing public sauna. And there's literally, you know, many dozens just in Minneapolis now and a new one popping up every week. It's pretty incredible. So uh, I'll just pause. I'll pause there. Public saunas, except for town saunas. There used to be town a saunas. lot of them in every town, at least in northern Minnesota. And I think Ely may be the only one left now. Duluth, there's a newer generation of people that have come there. But uh, uh, that used to be pretty common. Now, it used to be also that the sauna was the cleanest place that you could be. And that's why Finns often would build the sauna first and then live in that while they were building their home. Most babies at that time, in this country at least, were delivered in the sauna because it was much cleaner than any hospital at that time. I don't know about Finland, Risto. Is that a tradition there too? Or because uh, you've had a little different health system. Well, that is the tradition that was in Finland that they, they would build a sauna first uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, it's a smaller structure, gives you shelter from the elements. Uh, you can cook in there, you know, and just like you said, you know, it serves as the hospital. So uh, it was it was it was the first building that people would would put on their uh, property. The next one that they would do is the shelter for the animals because those had to survive over the winter too. And only after everybody was secure, then they would start building the home. So it was just a kind of a being practical. I think my brother and I are the first generation, at least in our family, that was born in a hospital. So that's uh, a little different perspective. And it used to be said, if you can't cure it by sauna or tar water, it's not worth curing. So uh, uh, one of the things that maybe uh, Risto had talked about earlier or before was that one of the things we used for getting rid of colds was taking a sauna and having hot tar water, pine tar. And uh, I always remember that my colds were shortened dramatically as a kid by taking a sauna. And it turns out one of the reasons for having a fever is that viruses and bacteria don't like heat to multiply. And so the body generates that temperature elevation. The sauna does it with a little more assistance. Um, so that was great. And I've, this is a kind of a minor aside perhaps, but it's great for teenagers with pimples. If you, back in my day, if you squeezed a pimple, it was a big mark on your face. If you go in the sauna and have it hot and then squeeze your pimples afterwards, there's no mark by Monday morning. So uh, just a little aside, maybe minor. Uh, okay, go back to Nicole. So what are the challenges you're facing right now in the Southern Minnesota climate? And uh, what are you doing? And how did you manage the business aspect of this? Uh, well, I first would say how personally I'm happy there hasn't been a lot of snow. As a business owner, uh, I was really hoping for like a really cold, snowy winter um, because I'm a brand new entrepreneur. Um, I didn't, I have a, a very busy day job. I didn't plan on becoming uh, an entrepreneur, but I really felt that um, Mankato is, is my hometown and I really wanted to bring this sauna culture um, down to kind of my home area. And so right now, the biggest challenge is just getting the word out there for people to understand that, like, well, wait, why a mobile sauna? You can bring me a sauna? Like, what does that look like? Uh, and, and I can share my screen um, just so you can just kind of see a couple of photos here. Uh, and so this is the inside of, of what my, my sauna looks like. And there's a, a changing room as well that you walk into. Um, but then also, I've been able to bring my sauna to a few events. This is down at the Mankato at the Wine Cafe. I have friends that, that uh, run the Mankato Wine Cafe. And so we've had sauna Sundays down there where uh, people can sign up for an hour time slot with their friends to, to use the sauna. Um, also in Helsinki, I discovered the long drink. And so naturally we had to uh, in incorporate that for a little of a finished theme um, while we had sauna days down at the Wine Cafe. 
Um, and, and so it's just been really fun. Uh, this is a, a family where the gal heard that we were going to be doing sauna days uh, in, in, at the wine cafe. And so they, she came down and met her family, uh, the rest of the family in, in, in the area. And so that was just really fun. So it's really kind of started a whole conversation. Uh, I've brought it out at different like polar plunges and different events like that. Um, so just kind of wanted to, to share a few photos as to um, what that looks like. Um, but yeah, it's been really, really fun. And again, I, I didn't plan on becoming an entrepreneur. The, the first conversations were really, of, you know, hey, I think I want to get a sauna and put one in the backyard. And um, then before you know it, it just kind of like, sure, if this is my goal is to bring sauna culture down here, then we'll start a, I'll start a business. And so, uh, but the short answer would be is the educational piece of, we don't have as many people of finished descent uh, in Southern Minnesota. Um, I thought my whole life, I was um, half German, a quarter Lithuanian and a quarter Swiss until after I came back from Helsinki, speaking of the Mayo, of Mayo Clinic, uh, I had one of the, did the, the test and I felt right at home when I was in Helsinki, and it turns out I am 9.5% Finnish. So it all just comes full circle. So my Lithuanian ancestors, it turns wow. out, I think they crossed the Baltic. Um, and so that was something like brand new I never knew of. And um, so that's been really fun. It's just this whole sauna, like getting to know folks. And I kind of have compared it to what yoga was like 50 years ago. Maybe 50 years ago, you heard of yoga. I'm saying sauna, at least in Southern Minnesota, it's like yoga 50 years ago. And what I like about both activities is it's not competitive. Um, you, you can't be bad at it. You just have to give it a try. And, you know, and that's what I love. And here I am saying I brought sauna culture down to Southern Minnesota. Well, as soon as I like get my website made a year ago and all of that, it turns out there was a couple other entrepreneurs here that are in the barrel saunas and we're making barrel saunas and selling them. And, and that's great. Some people are like, Oh, you're going to rent mobile saunas from someone else in town. I'm like, that's fabulous. Like, um, and so I really believe in like the economic clusters of like, the more saunas, the better, the more events we can do together. And so um, my biggest challenge is that my day job kind of gets in the way of my side hustle. Um, I, I want to do all of these other things and build out on it. Um, but when it's not rented, when I'm not being a great business owner, I am a great sauna user. And so last two nights are great examples. You know, a couple of girlfriends like, hey, can I come over? I'm like, sound is at 100 degrees right now. So by the time you get here, that'll be like perfect timing. So it's just been really, really fun. So I'll, I'll pause there. How about you, JP? Uh, the question, what's been the biggest challenge? Yeah, they're looking at the challenges and how you came about doing this. How you're expanding it. Because you've obviously done a lot of different venues. And we tried to get you at FinFest 17 at Orchestra Hall that time. But I think uh, Risto and uh, uh, group got the I, sound of that went around the got, country. They had the they had that amazing tour that year. That that yeah. kicked a lot off. Was, was that 2017? 17, yes. That's when you were on wow. the panel. Wow, it's been a while. Um, yeah, you know the journey. It, it's so it's so exciting, really, being on this panel uh, today. I think, like especially you know this week, again with this New York Times article, like you know the title of the Zoom is uh, is is the steam is on in Minnesota. Like you know from millennials to immigrants, the steam is on. And, uh, you know, if anybody hasn't checked out the New York Times article, just documenting all of the, just the, many of the different projects around the state. Uh, in Minnesota, the sa saunas are hotter than ever. And there's a full, uh, you know, there's a full page that just barely scratches the surface even of all of the new projects. So just in terms of like a timely conversation for us to be having, um, you know, there's all of these amazing projects in here. Sauna Camps is mentioned. Uh, Peter and Stone is in here. Uh, sauna and Sobriety. Glenn is in here. Um, and Darren Mays from Urban Wings. And these are all people that I've had the pleasure of working with over, you know, like this, this stuff all started. I, you know, I still remember, you know, just meeting all of these people and just talking about 
their dreams and like what this could be for them and um what it has been for me and just to watch this whole you know before i get in any challenges i just got to say like yeah there's challenges but it like when you're considering like what has happened in the last 10 years you know a really a a, a true revival of of something that's you know rooted in the finnish tradition and also definitely taking on you know new formats and you know public and mobile and making its way into culture in in Minnesota and in urban urban settings too in really really innovative ways it's it's incredible to see and um and seeing the variety of different projects is really exciting and I'm really proud of that too I talked just I mentioned a little bit about what got me really interested in sauna was like not I've learned so much from the Finnish tradition and that's been like a really informative part of me learning how a culture takes on the work of having a authentic beautiful thermic bathing tradition that's like deep and meaningful and you know there are businesses that are part of it but it's it's, a, it's such a deep part of culture you can't even separate it from the culture and seeing that model and being able to spend time there really helped me think deeply about you know the challenge and how this gets into the challenge is for me the challenge has been how to translate that here not just not just take like finnish sauna as it is and you know is important someplace else and do it here but to take like the dynamics the way it's practiced like what is it about it the way it uh you know interacts with the environment there the way it's like you know fits into the culture like for example you know sauna in finland um you mentioned a lot of public saunas but it's it's it, there are a number of a number of public saunas there but it's also a place where the kind of the backyard sauna and the cabin sauna and the sauna with families like the public scene there compared to places like you know the growth that we've seen in places like germany and other places in europe where like the public sauna scene is just it's the thing and it's it's not so much of a backyard cabin tradition it's become very quickly responding to like a urban need that people have to um to connect to socialize and so thinking about what are the what how to translate it well in our culture like how to how to make it relevant and um kind of speak to things like have the magic have its own magic the way that you know the i think the reason it's so meaningful and important in places where it is like finland or the way rush uh, banya is in russia or hamam is in turkey is they're they're practicing it in a way that's really um you know it really scratches an itch for their culture for what people are experiencing like or not experiencing and needing there you know um and i think that's why public sauna and community sauna has really taken off here in the last few years you know we're a very fast moving uh culture we don't have a lot of cohesion there's not unlike the nordic countries where there's like a a strong sense of i think identity of national identity of um ethnic identity um there's a cohesion that you know in these like social democracies that we we're we're very individualistic here just to a, such a high degree that I think having places and spaces where we can kind of come together, I think that that's just one of the reasons that there's been so much uh, energy and uh, support for those spaces. I never set out to like, this is the other, this has been another big challenge for me is like, I didn't set out with a particular agenda on any of this. I was like really kind of following this curiosity and kind of almost this question about it, like kind of culturally, I thought it was a really cool thing and like I was kind of praying for something big at that time in my life like I wanted just to like be like do something um drastic and like be all in and I just thought that this was such a cool frontier because I hadn't I didn't see people translating it in new ways that I felt like you know the North American modern North American thermic bathing tradition had really been um real you know it fully realized or you know it seemed like we had we had places we could reference for inspiration 
Um, but in terms of like a format, the way that there's such a national kind of identity around it in many other places um, or cultural identity when it comes to like Native Americans and sweat lodge, you know, we didn't really have that here. We still, you know, we're still, we still don't, but we're, we're starting to develop enough, you know, different people practicing it, enough sort of collaboration, enough music, you know, enough different concerts going on where there's, there's, you know, new, I think new traditions that are starting to really be meaningful and sub substantive um, and not just, you know, millennial, oh, look at those millennials, you know, kind of having fun with their mobile toys. But I think the, there's, there's such substance to the projects that, you know, were documented in the New York Times and that, you know, many of the people on the chat here have been a part of that, you know, it's, we're starting to really see um, not just people doing what has been done, but people doing new things in ways that are really um, starting to inform uh, a new sensibility around how can we have the most joyful healing experience from the fire and ice today and have it be as relevant to our culture as the way it is to, you know, finish finish people who are you know enjoying it in the context of Finnish culture. Now, a couple of questions to all of you. Uh, one of the complaints that has been brought up is in Finland, you basically go in a sauna nude. And that's not necessarily true here, depending on what kind of sauna. And I remember I made a comment to you, John, when you had uh, the sauna at Surly. And I uh, uh, made that comment, I think, to you at that time. And you said, ah, oh, gee, I don't want to spoil my business right now. And that was very early onset. Second question is temperature. I personally like a 180 to 200 degree sauna Fahrenheit. And uh, is that consistent with what you all are doing? 140 to 150 is like, I'm good with it. It just kind of depends if how long I'm in there and which friends are all with me. So I'm kind of across the board, but I'm actually okay doing a little lower temp. Is that really a sauna at 130, 140, 150? 140, 150, I said, but like also a 180. I mean, it just kind of depends. And so that's like my argument is there's no wrong way to sauna. Everyone's true, different. True. Yeah, I'm from the uh, as as much of a kind of creative fusion new wave guy that I am in the sauna world. Uh, I am. am a, I did grow up in a school of Glenn Arbach and and Good Heat. So I I do feel yeah you know having that 180 to 200 good heat um, that that sets the tone for everything and I think that that's kind of what yeah there's definitely you know experiences to have at at lower temperatures but then I think that's why I think the language of thermic bathing and comes in the comes in handy because you know you can talk we can like bash infrared saunas but the, just the bottom line is like it's they're just not saunas there, but they're thermic. It's a thermic bathing technology, you know, the same way that it's just a different, it's just a different infrastructure. But when it comes to specifically sauna, if you're saying sauna in the Finnish tradition, I think having that heat, you know, 180 to, to 200, everybody's body is different, but I think it really, it gives you some, there, there's a certain physiology that's available in the deep heat, the high heat where your body slows down a certain way that I think is is a kind of a grounding and a core a core part of the experience. I try I, I do try not to uh, you know get too creative with that part of it. I've I've also read several times where it's uh, have a, a cold beer in or after the sauna. I didn't grow up with any alcohol in the sauna. We didn't have it as part of our sauna bathing. Risto, what about your your background? Well, so my background, uh, I was born in Finland, so my background in sauna was, was a lot like genes that uh, <clears throat> I was in a sauna before I was born. And from there on, we went to sauna every Saturday, and it was a place where you would clean yourself. You know, the first uh, couple of homes that I remember we lived in, we didn't have a shower, we didn't have a bathtub, so we went to grandma's on Saturdays and, you know, heated the sauna and carried the water from the well and, you know, without bathing and the changing room wasn't heated. So, you know, in the winter time, it was about, you know, 100, 150 yards to grandma's home. So, you know, once once you went in, you wanted to go in quickly. And then, you know, once you got out, you just wrapped yourself in a towel and ran up the hill and uh, defrosted the icicles from your hair in front of the uh, fireplace. But 
uh, I, I guess, you know, talking about this, uh, this uh, temperature, that is a question I get a lot for full disclosure. I work for a sauna manufacturer. Today, we have about 100 people in Kokedo building saunas and uh, steam generators for steam rooms. And we do also have the infrared product that uh, John mentioned. Uh, the history of the company goes back to 1919 in Finland and then in the uh, early, mid 1970s, uh, uh, they started to import uh, Matos brand sauna heaters and cut rooms in, uh, in Seattle. And eventually that company was acquired by, by the company Kokedo. Uh, resulting in, you know, that we have about 100 people in there right now. Um, and I, I do get this question a lot about, you know, what is the right temperature? And, you know, uh, we all know that uh, the electric heaters that are the most common sauna heaters today, those are restricted to 194 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States. And uh, I get this question a lot, like, you know, give me the biggest heater and I want to get to 200 and plus. Uh, well, first of all, uh, to me, that question is a very personal question. Like John described, John Nicole wants a lower heat. John says it depends. Uh, I'm in the 160, 170 range, but it also depends on, uh, in, in a wood burning sauna, it feels like you can be in a higher temperature because that room breathes in a different way than when you have an electric heater. So, you know, if, if the if the gauge hits 200 in a, in a wood burning sound, I, it feels I'm more comfortable in an electric sound. I, I don't like that high temperatures. My skin starts to curl and it's, it's too dry. So I, I like, like that more moisture in the, in the room, more humidity. And sauna is an environment that where you can adjust the humidity. You know, if you, if you go and take a steam bath, you'll be in 100% humidity no matter what. In, the, in an infrared room, it's, it, you don't use any water at all. So, so the benefit of a traditional sauna is that you can really adjust it and, and have it to, to, what, to your liking. And one of the things that many people don't understand are a true old sauna was a very dry environment, drier than most deserts. And I saw something about 10 to 20% most of them, if you go back and really test it, less than 10%. And so that's one of the reasons. And temperature wise, I've been in Finland once and my own sauna once in a 240 Fahrenheit temperature. That's too hot. And if you have any metal in there, watch out. Wood starts charring a little bit. Any other comments that any of you have? Um, We've got, uh, we're almost at the 40 minute mark here. Uh, personal comments. I was just going to share that um, the, the whole sauna experience and having this business has been really kind of fun for uh, my dad. Is, his dad is of Lithuanian descent. And so last May, we actually went to Lithuania and I turned it into like a sauna tour. I was like, we were in the only amber sauna made of amber that's like open to the public and so we made it into a whole sauna tour and it was just really fun to you know be like all right this is the lithuanian different styles of sauna and to have the whole family experience and um so i just kind of really encourage um you know it, it's it's neat to learn about uh, everyone else's different you know like he'd kind of referenced native americans and sweat lodges and turkish baths and so it's just really cool to learn about everyone's different experiences and be able to check them out I tell people that I've had in my sauna, how long do you stay and uh, what do you do in there? Uh, they don't understand that for me, it's a bath. And the two people that I had last night, one from New York, one from Pennsylvania, uh, they didn't understand that once you sit there and sweat and throw some loda water and uh, uh, that you can wash. They said, oh, why? Where? I said, right there, you've got soap, you've got shampoo, you've got a lot of water. And so that's a different sort of culture outlook. And uh, how hot do you want it? I think we've all felt it's comfort for each of us. And it should be enjoyable. And that's really the bottom line. People won't come back if they're forced to do something else. And... Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not a golfer, but I've been at some golf clubs as guests, 
and they have steam rooms. And those I find not very comfortable, uh, not as comfortable as a dry sauna. So it's just my personal take on it. There is a question that what, from Christopher Rice that what are the most common American misconceptions you run into? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I get this question a lot that, you know, people think that, you know, the sauna heaters are like monster trucks. They ask for the biggest kick-ass heater that you have because they want to have, want to have the room hot. Uh, the, the heaters need to be sized correctly to the room for them to function properly, like you would size your furnace or your air conditioner. We all understand probably that, you know, a unit that too small won't get the room hot, but then the unit that is too big, I'm talking about electric heaters now. Uh, they'll get the room to temperature, but then the temperature sensor tells the unit to shut off, turn off. And then it comes on and it turns off. So it, it, it ends up cycling on and off and the rocks will never get warm. So that, that's one of the biggest misconceptions that I have is that people people like to, like, like think power gives you better performance. Uh, on a wood burning stove, you control that by just throwing sticks in the <laughs> in the mm -hmm. fireplace, and you can get it to two fifty. Do you get those questions in southern Minnesota, Nicole? So I would say with some of my friends and, and family and kind of my network, it's it, one of the misconceptions is like, well, I don't like being hot. I don't want to try that. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not someone who's like, I love being hot. I want to move down to Texas or Arizona, like. No, no, like, and so I think sometimes it's if you've never been in a really nice sauna where it's designed right, et cetera. And like, again, I said, I, I learned from like our YMCA, like that was like, that's not a nice sauna. Like, that's what I thought saunas were like. Ugh. Um, and, and so I always am quick to kind of tell some of my friends who are like, no, I don't like being hot. I'm like, no, no, give this a try. This is really completely different. And so that would be one of the misconceptions is like, it's only for people who like to be hot and sweaty, which is not how I identify at all. Um, so that's one thing I always challenge people like, come on in and then I'll, I'll, you know, expand your horizons. I'm not someone who wants to be hot and sweaty at a music festival in late July. Yeah. JP, any thoughts? You know, uh, the, the biggest thing that I have encountered is more than misconceptions is really um, enthusiasm, really like misconceptions. Yeah, because, you know, there hasn't there's just not a lot of there's not there's not much exposure yet. But I, what I've really been struck by more than um, misconceptions and it, it's been the energy from people who are like discovering it for the first time, who are um, just wow i never i never knew about that like it's been a lot of that newcomer energy that has been so um satisfying to to be a part of to be able to introduce this to people who had no idea who had no misconceptions they had no conception whatsoever um so i just think as a you know as a somebody who's able to my current role as the um the director of customer engagement for superior sauna and steam and I get to in, in, introduce so many people to this experience. And uh, it's a great, you know, it's a great thing to be able to do. I'm very, very grateful um, for that for that work. So more than misconceptions, I'd say just struck by um, struck by people's excitement and openness to try it. Because it's a pretty, I mean, let's be honest, you had no idea, which is like most people, you know, this idea of stepping in a 200 degree room and then stepping outside, it's, it sounds just so, it sounds so crazy. And um, it's amazing to think, you know, we've like during the Great Northern Festival, I mean, we hosted that like, you know, over 5,000 people in 10 days, you know, most of them had never, most of them, it was totally new to, new, it was totally new to them. And that's just a, a really adventurous, that's a lot of people who are just like trying something very, um, kind of out there so um i'm glad people are glad people are adventurous i want to make a couple of comments on the uh, chats that i'm looking at uh said i have read the finnish party of health suffered in part because of the full cream and the copious amounts of coffee well i think it wasn't just the coffee i think it was the diet in finland at the time which was heavy heavy saturated fats in dairy it was an agrarian country at one time and uh, uh, 
So I think that's part of what the government actually went through. Can you imagine doing that in this country? Uh, going to schools and community centers and whatnot and modifying the diet of a population? Uh, I can't see that happening here. Um, but uh, they, uh, I was surprised that so one time when we had a FinFest uh, 20 years ago here, I sat next to a researcher from Helsinki and uh, it was in downtown St. Paul. You know, the first thing you do is they serve you rolls and butter and a glass of water. And she said, oh, I haven't seen butter for a long time. That's interesting, but, you know, butter may be more helpful than some of the other spreads that we use. Then there was a kind of, I would use sauna, even if it was a tad unhealthy. One of the reasons that there were some articles in the American medical literature some years ago was that uh, with pregnant mothers, there were some neural tube defects that were developed uh, in, in infancy, in utero. And they said it was because of the heat exposure. Well, most of those came from hot tub baths, especially in California on the West Coast. You know, immersion in hot water, very warm water, is uh, transmits heat to the body much more efficiently than hot air. And correct me if I'm wrong, Risto, but uh, uh, it's not that there aren't any neural tube defects in Finland, but it's much less than what this country was experiencing at the time. I have no comment for that. I, <laughs> I was in the sauna before I was born, but uh, you guys can look at me. Oh yeah, yes, I was too. So, <laughs> um, are there any other questions or any thoughts? We've got about ten minutes left. Tommy, have has there been any other comment from uh, from what you've seen? Well, there was one in here a couple times about people's preferences for custom built or kit saunas, and I don't know, maybe from your own experiences. What are people interested in, or or what would you recommend? Or I mean, I, I assume there's lots of answers to that. So why don't we why talk about that? Maybe Nicole, you want to take that one first. I I first made the phone call. I had met um, the the owner of Voyager uh, Saunas while I was at Sauna Days uh, two years ago, and so we got talking, and I was like, you know what? And, and I gave him a phone call, and I was like, hey, I'm thinking about maybe putting a barrel sauna in my backyard, and they were like, can I please talk to you about that? And I was like, okay. And before you know it, uh, I'm talking about getting more of the finished style and um, building. So right now, that's what I have is like the finished style mobile sauna. Um, however, I will be quick to say that when my sauna is rented out, it's not in my backyard, but I still want a sauna. So it's a matter of time, I think, until I have um, something built uh, that is more permanent for uh, my backyard. And mm -hmm. then the mobile sauna will still be rented. So I would say it's a yes and. But I'm not someone who will be in one of those tents in my house and zip up or sit in one of those. Like, that's not ever going to be my thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so, so what was the question again, Tommy? Uh, the the preferences between sauna kits or prefabricated or custom custom ones. Okay, I can answer that one. I, I think, you know, the, the biggest uh, issue right now or currently is that, you know, American homes were not designed to have an extra room in them. Right. So you, you have to find, if you want to permanently install sound on your home, you have to find a space, dedicate a closet to it, or, you know, find something. So in that respect, you know, freestanding rooms like what I have, I just put it in a corner in our, in our um, basement uh, family room, is a perf was a perfect solution because I didn't want to, you know, start framing something. But, you know, if we think about finished homes, you won't, you won't really build a home without the that dedicated space. So right. everything over there is built in. I mean, it's permanently attached to the house. Yeah, it's part of the blueprint of where you Correct. live, right? That there's a sauna involved. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's definitely a difference. And there's a comment here from Christopher about Sauna Trail podcast episode discussing kit or build um, choices. So that's, that's to be, uh, I s assume you can look that up online. On the outdoor, you know, different sauna options. Um, Right now, the Sauna Village was such a, a unique opportunity for people to come and try. One of the things that's so cool about it is that you can try different types of saunas right next to each other. So you can really compare the heat like in your body uh, in real time. So comparing, you know, the heat of a, 
of a barrel um, right now, uh, like the Thermary, Thermary barrels, one of the products that Superior carries, um, mm. really great option for an outdoor sauna. Um, there's a new Mod Pod um, sauna that assembles in a weekend and is a, a, a kit style sauna as well. One of the things that I think is really interesting about the market right now is we're seeing really high quality solutions at different price points. So, um, you know, if you want a sauna for under 5,000, some of the sauna tents now are really fantastic quality. You want a sauna for, you know, under 20,000 or under 15,000, there's some, there's some really starting to be some really good options at different price points. I think it's just a matter of understanding there are trade-offs. Um, but I think, you know, the perfect sauna is one that really suits your, your entire life, which is part of that's your, your budget. So making sure you're really comfortable with, um, you know, the kind of heat you're investing in. Um, but that's the biggest change that I've seen in the last uh, five years is the quality at different price points. So it's a great time to be um, shopping. I'm looking for my first house right now. And so I'm, this is question is kind of uh, really up for me. I'm finally getting to choose my own, uh, put together my own backyard package. The uh, photo that had my uh, sauna in it from our cabin was built by the same folks that built the Welcome Center for the Friends of the Sac Sim Bogs. And uh, uh, it is locally cut wood. Now, the problem is not fully finished, I found out from uh, the Finnish researcher that's going around the country. It is dovetailed, but it is not curved top and bottom. So they unfortunately had to put something in between. And so it, that, that takes it away from the true authentic Finnish sauna, but it works very nicely. So uh, I'll just set up with my comment. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to see your sauna. And, um, you know, uh, just even in these pictures that we've seen how different saunas can look, right? And some of it's, you know, sourced from what you have around and some of them are mobile and some of them are modern and some of them are traditional. I think it shows that this experience can be so can look very different and take many forms. And it really is sort of about what pleases you and what makes, it, what what sort of meets you in your life. And, um, you know, I like, I think Nicole, you said earlier, it's not something you can like be good at. You just, uh, you just do it how, how it is uh, best that's fits. Right. So I think that that's really good. And John, your point about sort of the quality of sauna, the price point quality merger over the past few years, I think that's great news for, for consumers in here who are maybe looking to, purchase saunas or even do custom saunas um, at their at their own places. So that's, um, you know, it's a good time for sauna in the U.S., I think. Sure is. It sure is. Um, I just want to want to thank the, the Finnish the Finnish community and the, the foundation um, over the years um, and also just the hospitality, the, the, the people who over the years I've met, especially the people who spent a lot of time in Finland, um, keeping alive that spirit of radical hospitality, um, that just like low key, um, low key, generous, um, generous spirit. Um, I, I, I really, I really value that. And it's been, um, it's been a continued source of, um, you know, it's not just inspiration. It's just, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And I hope, I hope, more people get to experience yes all these new kinds but i think also you know being able to experience finnish sauna um in a in a setting where people have practiced it in finland and you know just the finnish way there's something so special about that and that's one of the that's maybe one to one of the questions about the challenges just because i'm often talk i'm often like hosting putting together kind of these new events and stuff i i think that my appreciation um, and respect for the Finnish tradition, it's not something I get to just speak directly towards very often because um, I'm mm -hmm. often making up new stuff. So I just wanted to take this opportunity since that's kind of the, the theme here, um, just to thank thank everybody, um, especially the Finns to, for your generous spirit and for welcoming newcomers into the into the scene, you know, like myself um, and supporting it. Um, really appreciate it and it's made a big difference. There's a few questions here that we could maybe spend a few minutes on. Uh, something especially unique in the Twin Cities that has created this explosion of sauna. And you can touch on some of these, JP. But I think it's uh, it's the socialization 
personal touch that you get from being in the sauna with a group of similar people that's important here. You can talk to them, and I pointed out before that when you have this thing in your hand, it's hard to do anything else. Uh, any comments on that? Well, particular to the Twin Cities in terms of what's, you know, what's unique about the the Twin Cities um, sauna scene. Um, I know Kirk is in the audience here, um, but you know we we set the bar of hospitality with the public events with the co-op where it was you know people who member owners coming and hosting their community, and I think that I think that that really early on set a uh, um a tone of hospitality and a tone of kindness and just a it kind of set the tone of this being a kind of a third space and i think that that i think that that made a big difference um in terms of inviting a lot of people into the scene and being very welcoming early on um and particular to minneapolis too where there's not, there's a lot of people here, a lot of young people, but in terms of like, as a city, if you travel to other cities, socially, in terms of things to do that are, you know, healthy, fun, um, but that aren't going to a bar, um, you know, I think it also just really fills a social need here of um, a different way of interacting with people, like you were saying, Gene, and there's a social, there's a social aspect to it. And I think that it fits into Minneapolis culture. It scratches a particular itch that I've felt when I moved back to Minneapolis. It's a great city. I love Minneapolis. And socially, it, it's, it can be pretty challenging. So I think the public scene um, really answered, you know, kind of evolved, perhaps in response to that. Um, you know, there's not a lot of other places where you can have that type of uh, both fun, but quality of interaction, or you can kind of just enjoy the company of people, but not interact directly. Um, it can just be a comfortable space to be around, you know, with people, but not, you know, not having to socialize either. Uh, there's a question here about the cold plunge. Now, I didn't grow up with a cold plunge. I've done it. Uh, we didn't have a, a lake nearby. I have a pond behind our cabinet, uh, cabin sauna now, but uh, uh, any thoughts? Uh, become an important addition to the sauna experience? Are you seeing this too? I I don't look at that as yeah, there's I mean, a the cold, risk. There's a there's, risk for certain people. There's a good argument to be made that the cold plunge uh, and the uh, interest and especially from the health community and the human optimization, the Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, those, those guys, they were the endurance uh, and the ath athletes, they started doing cold plunges for their recovery, you know, speed up their recovery and reduce mm -hmm. inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that was started to receive so much interest and traction a few years ago. What I noticed was it was really the pull from the cold plunge and the cold exposure is what, and then, you know, people are like, oh, you know what goes really good with getting really cold, getting really hot afterwards. Oh, how do we do that? You know, that's when people, a lot of people started talking about, um, that's when sauna started to re-emerge in a really big way in terms of, um, I'd say, pop culture and uh, mainstream culture, um, on the, specifically on the heels of when it started to get mentioned, you know, daily in Joe, on Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss, first in the context of ice bathing and, and then as a, you know, kind of as a remedy for that. But I think it's been huge um, in terms of the repopularization of sauna, the popular popularity. I want to make a comment here. You're talking about highly trained athletes and younger people. And I'm going to be a little bit careful if we start taking this to everyone, especially those with heart disease and uh, very high blood pressure. Uh, there have been fatalities when people have taken a sauna and jumped in a cold lake. Uh, my, well, anyway, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> So I'm not it or one way or the other. I'm just pointing out that people on, uh, you know, the everyday human optimization kind of podcast, people looking, you know, to improve their health. They started talking a lot about cold plunges a few years ago, okay. and uh, and that directly led to the repopularization of uh, sauna. Again, taken in context. Uh, there's a, a Scott Raisinen here. A few times yeah. you went to public saunas. I was a limitation of water. I want to make a side comment here. I can't comment on public saunas of water supply, but uh, when the uh, winter war in Finland and other areas in Finland after that, the public saunas were used 24 hours a day. 
and they had some problems at times with uh, uh, hot or heat loving bacteria. And when you have a sauna that dries out in between uses, that's not an issue. Anytime you start running into very hot water that's there all the time, then you start getting into potential problems of infections. Uh, drawbacks or benefits of infrared saunas. Any comments? Well, I think, you know, I may have to respond to that. Uh, it's a different product. You know, again, you know, we are talking about the, the you know, the different ways to heat your body, whether you take a steam shower or an infrared uh, room or a traditional sauna. You know, I, I just have to uh, respect people's choices. And, uh, you know, if you're not comfortable in a steam shower, like Mr. Genius said, you know, you don't really particularly care for that. And uh, if you don't like the traditional sauna, then, well, there's that in between. That's a little more gentle and uh, a different way, method of, uh, Heating a body. If, if you want to get get warm, or uh, you know, uh, get some topical heat to yourself, um, it's it's one way of doing it. I, I can't choose for you, and I you know I can only only talk about the differences, and you have you have to decide yourself. Similar, I, I would just offer uh, related that. The whole sauna there's just so many different options and having events like sauna days or, or you know as jp had referenced other events to be able to try out different saunas and just feel the different temperatures and see the different layouts etc um, after our first year at sauna days i ended up buying my own custom made sauna one of my girlfriends that lives in esco in northern minnesota she her husband built one in their backyard that they have one and then my other friend he had one uh, be custom built uh, in cocado minnesota and uh, delivered to his cabin. So that example of just four of us, of uh, three different households, we have yeah. three different saunas now in the last two years. Well, I, I think you're you're hitting on something really important, and it goes back to what we said earlier. It's it's it. You meet sauna where you where sauna wants to meet you, and the other way around, whatever feels good to you. We can have an argument about whether the infrared saunas are saunas or not. I think that that's going on in the chat right now. But I want to say. We've come up on our uh, on time here for today, but I want to thank you all so much for for the time you spent with us today and for your perspectives, uh, Nicole, Risto, and John and uh, Jean for for moderating. I think this was great to get a the medical perspective, the Finnish perspective, the entrepreneurial perspective, and all located there in in Minnesota. So I'm really thankful for you. Uh, for all of your time, and I hope that everybody enjoyed it. Uh, and at this point, um, as you're as you're leaving, we'll put on our sauna theme song that is by Finlandia Foundation Performer of the Year, Miska Kajanos. Thank you all so much. Kitos ja näkemiin. May it be hot. May Kitos. it be hot. Ja kitos. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you. Make friends in Finland You gotta put on your birthday suit And let your hair down Cause we don't play around We've been chilling in the heat Listening to the sound of the kiwas So throw in some löylyä lisää Tervetuloa saunaan sisään Get your butt on the seat Keep your distance Please let me show you How my Finnish heart rings This is my nature Just hear the kiwas sing in the sun, there's no ego, we're all the same If it is too hot for you, don't be afraid So jump, drop your clothes and grab the Basics. Let's face it, it sounds kind of crazy. You us, we throw water on the rocks. It can be electric or heated with some logs. Load, that's the steam coming up. That's the spirit of sauna. Did you mean sauna? Yeah, well, call it.
call it what you want. Bust it. Banya. Hamam. Korean spa. Please let me show you how my finish hat dreams. This is my nature. Just hear the key was sing. In the sound of there's no ego, we're all the same. If it gets too hot for you, don't be afraid. So join me, drop your clothes and grab the little cow. In a subtle sound of find your peace, find your rauha. In the sound of In the heat, and you're sitting next to me. We gonna keep it real. Say you like it is. Things take a sauna almost every day. There are no rules. Just do your way. Please let me show you how my finish hat rings. This is my nature. Just hear the key I sing. In the sound of there's no ego. We're all the same. If it gets too hot for you, don't be afraid. In the sauna, 